Friday video. So today's video is my December TBR. It is the last TBR of 2020 and won't we all cheer when this year ends? <laughs> Uh, I have my TBR for you and I am taking part in the Merry Bookmas Readathon which is hosted by Completely Melanie and um, oh I forget the lad's name and I haven't written it down I am an awful YouTuber um, but I will link their announcement videos for you down below so you can check this readathon out uh, so there are uh, let's have a look uh, 12 prompts and then a bonus prompt at the end so keep watching for that because it'll be worth it um so um the first prompt is partridge in a pear tree and that is to read a book with a bird a fruit or a tree on the cover or in the title so for that one i'm going to be reading the clockwork crow by Catherine Fisher. So not only is the word crow in the title, but there is a clockwork crow on the cover. So this is a very thin book. It's only 182 pages, so not very big at all. It's also really flubby. It's really flubby. So I'm going to enjoy reading this. And also the font and the margin sizes are going to mean that this I'm, I'm probably going to fly through this and let's face it I really need to because I am really behind on my Goodreads goal so yeah uh, this is a story um, when Seven Reese is given a newspaper parcel by a stranger late at night in a freezing Victorian train station she has no idea what trouble it contains she's heading for a new life in the remote country house of Plassey Fran so I'm guessing it's Wales. Uh, but when she gets there, the happy Christmas she hoped for turns out to be an illusion. Armed with a talking bird, who might not be telling the truth, a magical snow globe and her own indomitable courage, Seren sets off on a perilous midnight journey into an enchanted world of snow and stars to bring happiness back to Plassey Fran. So yeah, sounds really, really fun. Sounds really interesting. And I'm going to thoroughly enjoy it, hopefully. And apologies to all my Welsh um, subscribers because <laughs> my pronunciation was probably way off. <laughs> the next prompt is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and that's simply to read a book with red on it. So I am, I'm reading this one <laughs> and I say it like that because it's, it's a contemporary and it's a romance contemporary. And it's a chiclet, <laughs> a romance contemporary. <clears throat> Not my favourite, let's say. So this is The Parisian Christmas Bake Off uh, by Jenny Oliver. So there you go. Um, and this one says, Watching snowflakes dust the Eiffel Tower, Rachel Smithson, knows her commitment phobic ex, is probably already kissing someone else under the mistletoe. What a pig. Uh, but Rachel hasn't come to Paris to mope. Oh no. Super chef Henry Salernus is searching for Paris's next patisserie apprentice and Rachel is here to bake. With just one week to prove she can produce melt-in-the-mouth macarons and perfect profiteroles, Rachel needs no distractions. She's going to get some. Uh, but along with wafts of chocolate and sugar, there's a touch of Christmas magic in the air. And even though Rachel isn't looking for a fairy tale romance, the city of love might gift wrap her one anyway. It's cheesy. If this was a Christmas movie, I would lap it up because I love these cheesy Hallmark Christmas type movies. Reading it, I don't enjoy it so much. Um... But hey, we're going to give it a go. It's a Christmassy book. I might be more in the mood to read it at Christmas. So yeah, I'm reading The Parisian Christmas Bake Off. For prompt number three, uh, Silent Night. Don't judge a disability by its visibility. So this is to read a book with disability rep. And I kind of went along the theme of invisible disabilities, like the one that I suffer with, and that is mental health. Um, and this is The Definition of Us by Sarah Harris. So it looks like this. 
and this is a book with uh, mental health uh, representation in it. So it says, Florence doesn't always see things the way other people do. She feels different. When Florence meets Jasper, Andrew and Will, she can't imagine they'll have much in common. With at least five mental health conditions between them, they all have very different reasons for being referred to Manor Lane Therapy Centre. It's only when their therapist, Howard, goes missing that they find a common purpose. Worried by his disappearance and wanting answers, the four of them decide to track him down. As they cross the country in a borrowed van, asking each other ultimate questions and facing a series of challenges along the way, they start to reveal their true selves. And Florence realises there's more to all of them than just a di diagnosis. So, yeah, um, I'm hoping this is going to be good representation. Um, I've obviously been through a lot of therapy myself. I hope I'm not going to be angered by the representation in here. Um, so yeah, let's, let's hope. It's a good one. So a little bit of a mystery thriller in there as well with the disappearance of their therapist. So yes, that's the definition of us by Sarah Harris. The next prompt is I have a little dreidel. And this is a book which involves a game. Um, so for this one, I've gone for one of my fairy loot books and I have picked Star Daughter by uh, Shiveta Thakra. So it is that one. And look at this gorgeous edition. Um, so I thought this was really kind of Christmassy because, you know, Christmas star. Um, so this one is about um, a... A girl who uh, Sheetal is, um, her mother is a star but her father is human and on her 17th birthday the pull from the sky is growing stronger, um, so strong that Sheetal loses control and a flare of starfire burns her human father and injury only a full star's blood can heal. Uh, she has no choice but to answer the star song and ascend to the sky, but her celestial family has summoned her for a reason, to act as their human champion in a competition to decide the next ruling house of the heavens. Desperate to save her father, she agrees, but nothing could have prepared Sheetal to face the star's dark history or the forces that are working to shut the gate between the realms for good. It is a signed copy as well. So uh, the Fairy Loot editions are always beautiful and I cannot wait to pick this one up. I feel like it's going to be very, um, I don't know, very fantastical and I'm quite excited, to, you know, about these stars. Um, maybe this might um, make up for the disappointment of Stardust by Neil Gaiman. That was not a good book, uh, but hopefully this one will be. So I'm reading Star Daughter by Shveta. Thakura for that one. The next prompt is, I'll be home for bookmas. <laughs> I like what they did there. Uh, read in your favourite cosy spot at home. So this one doesn't particularly need any book. Um, so it's not going to be on the top of my priority list because anytime I read, I'm pretty much cosy up. Um, but the book I've chosen to read it with is The Night I Met Father Christmas by Ben Miller. And we have Father Christmas and his reindeer flying across the night sky there. And it says, Jackson knows all about the flying reindeer. He knows about the elves and the secret North Pole workshop. He knows about the magic that allows Father Christmas to deliver presents around the world in just one night. But there's one thing he doesn't know. How did Father Christmas become Father Christmas? And on Christmas Eve, Jackson meets Father Christmas and hears his incredible story. Um, uh, might not have been the story Jackson was expecting, but as Father Christmas tells him, no good story ever is. So yeah, I quite like that. Um, it's going to be a fun middle grade read. There's some beautiful pictures in here. Let me see if I can get some out. So there's some beautiful artwork in here. Um, so I am very much looking forward to this one. Again, this looks very much like, um, because there's a lot of artwork in there and because the type is quite large and the margins are quite large, I probably could fly through this pretty quickly. It's only 285 pages as well. So yeah, uh, definitely going to be a quick read, hopefully. So I need them because I, I have a lot of books I need to read. 
Um, so yeah, it says a sheer delight for all kids, both big and small. And that was a quote by Ruth Jones, award-winning writer and comedian. So she liked it. Hopefully I will too. So that's that one. Moving on to the next prompt. It is, baby, it's cold outside. And that is to read a cosy book. Again, any of these books could be cosy, but the book that I've picked, <laughs> it's another chiclet. Um, I had a couple in my uh, physical TBR that um, I just, look, it's Christmas and I have to read my Christmas books. So this is it. Um, so this is Christmas at the Cupcake Cafe by Jenny Colgan. So it looks like this. Uh, Charlotte from Planet Lottie did give me a good suggestion and she said see if I can find these on Scribd because it might be easier to listen to them than to physically read them. Um, I might get through them better that way. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can do that. Uh, but this says uh, Issy Randall. Oh Issy! Oh! I might, I might like this one. Um, I might like this one. I forgot that this had Issy as the main character. That's probably why I picked it up, actually. I probably went, Issy Randall, cool, took. Uh, because if you don't know, Issy is, well, Issa is what my little girl used to call herself because she couldn't say her full name when she was um, a toddler uh, because her full name was Melissa. She couldn't say Melissa. So she used to say, my name is Issa. Um, so Issy uh, Randall. Oh, that put a put a warm through my heart. Um, Issy Randall, proud owner of the Cupcake Cafe, is in love and couldn't be happier. Her new business is thriving and she's surrounded by close friends. Even her cupcake colleagues, Pearl and Caroline, don't seem quite as upbeat about the upcoming season of snow and merriment. But when her boyfriend, Austin, is scouted for a possible move to New York, Issy is forced to face up to the prospect of a long distance romance. This December, Issy will have to rely on all her reserves of courage, good nature and cinnamon to make sure everyone has a Merry Christmas one way or another. There's so much stress about having a happy Christmas um, that sometimes we forget to just enjoy it as is. Um, the one thing I will say about this one is that at the start of every chapter, we have a recipe. So I don't know if I might pick a couple of these recipes and try and do some cooking, baking? Oh, I don't know. Um, so yeah, if I do, I will try to vlog it. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's this one. Uh, Christmas at the Cupcake Cafe by Jenny Colgan. The next prompt is All I Want for Bookmas is You. And this is to read a romance or a book with a group of friends. Um, for this one, <laughs> I've gone for the friends because I just, I can't take another romance. Uh, and I'm reading this one. This is The Midnight Guardians by Ross Montgomery. It is a brand new book. It came out just in the month of November, I think. Um, and we have a beautiful tiger and a miniature knight on the back of it. It just looks so Christmassy. It's a chunker. Um, it is uh, 388 pages, so this might take me a while. And um, yeah, the type is not so small as in the other books, but still pretty large. Um, so this one is um, an evacuee, Col, um, childhood imaginary friends come to life. He discovers a world where myths and legends are real, but they bring dire news. His sister is in danger. Together with his guardians, a six-foot tiger, a badger in a waistcoat and a miniature knight, Col must race to blitz-bombed London to save her. But there are darker forces at work, even than the Nazi bombings. Soon Col is pursued by the terrifying Midwinter King, who is determined to bring an eternal darkness down over everything. So, yeah, this is very much like Christmas in London during 1940s. Uh, during the bombing blitz. Um, it's going to be very um, atmospheric, I can think of, um, and really Christmassy. Um, I'm quite looking forward to this one. I do believe that Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin recently interviewed uh, Ross Montgomery, so I will probably watch that video after I've read this book, uh, because I haven't watched it yet. 
uh, knowing that I was going to be reading this book in December. So yeah, I am looking forward to reading this one. Don't fall over. The next prompt is Happy Kwanzaa. And this is to read a book by or about a person of colour. And for that one, I, I had to. I had to. I really didn't want to have to wait to read this book. It is the sequel to a book that I have read in uh, last month, in October. This is the sequel to a book that I read in October and I just, I wanted to pick up this book straight away and that is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tommy Adeyemi. This is the sequel to uh, Children of Blood and Bone, um, which I loved. I loved it so much. It's one of my new favourite books. I just love the atmosphere. I love the characters. I love the sibling love um, and the sibling relationship that was in those books. It was so true to life. Like, I love you, but I hate you at the same time, brother, kind of feeling. And I just absolutely loved it. And I felt that the message that was behind the story as well didn't overpower the actual story. I'm all for having stories have a meaning behind them, like a real life lesson to be learned. But when that lesson overtakes the story, I feel like I'm being cheated. Uh, the blend of the storyline that is in the book and the message behind it was done beautifully, um, I felt, um, in the first book. So I'm quite excited to read the second. Plus as well, this one has beautiful straight edges and it's shorter than the other one. So I'm kind of like slightly disappointed it's shorter. It's only 404 pages, so it shouldn't take me too long to read. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's a third book um, in this or if it's just a duology. Um, I will have to check that out. I haven't seen anything else about a third book. Um, so this might wrap it all up um but it sells says on the back they killed my mother they took our magic they tried to bury us now we fight so yes very excited about this um i just wanted to jump straight on it after i finished children of blood and bone but i didn't and i held off and i'm going to read it in december instead so that's that one the next prompt is uh my favorite things and this is to read a book featuring your favourite trope. So, my favourite trope, uh, mermaids, and um, a broody man with a sassy woman. I love that trope. I love a broody man who is takes himself far too seriously. And then you have a real sassy female character who slowly but surely breaks him down so that he starts to enjoy life and have a bit of fun and maybe even crack a smile once or twice, you know, or even a joke. I mean, wow. Um, yeah, so I picked this one. Uh, this is Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. We have the Siren Queen. So I'm hoping that we're going to get some mermaids in here. Um, but also uh, the male and female characters in here, their relationship in the first book, Daughter of the P Pirate King, um, I absolutely loved their relationship. I won't go into details about it because it's kind of a spoiler, um, but I absolutely loved the male and female relationship in the first book. And I'm hoping it continues in the second book. Um, so I can't really give you a synopsis of this second book because it might spoil the first book. But the first book, Daughter of the Pirate King, is about this uh, female character called, is it Alosa? Alosa? Yeah, Alosa. And she is the daughter of the Pirate King and she gets kidnapped by another pirate ship. And they are trying to ransom her um, to try and... What? Anyway, uh, they are trying to ransom her, so to try and break down her father's rule over the ocean. So um, it doesn't all go quite to plan. Let's just put it that way. So yeah, very excited to be reading this book. 
have a very, very unstable pile of books at the side of me. Anyway, quickly moving on. The next prompt is Last Bookmas, and this is to read a book published in 2019. So I did check the publishing date on this book, and this was published in 2019. It is Frozen, um, and it is the animated Disney classics. So it's like this, it's a very short book. And I have the Little Mermaid version of this, and I read that recently. And it's literally just a novelization of the movie with some uh, artwork thrown in. So there's some conceptual artwork, um, some big stunning design pieces in there. Um, so yeah, all sorts of things like this. Um, so there's a conceptual artist work, which was work that was done when they were first putting it together and then the final artwork as well and then at the back we have um a bit about the art of disney frozen so a little bit of a blurb about the creation of the film and then also some information on some of the artists that worked on the film as well um i thoroughly enjoyed the uh disney's little mermaid version of these books so I thought I would pick up Frozen because Christmas, um, I thought it would be lovely. Um, I struggled to watch the film Frozen because it was mine and Melissa's favourite film that we would sit and watch together and we would jump up and sing our hearts out to let it go and pretend to build our ice castles together. So um, I have some absolutely fond, wonderful memories of watching that film with my little girl, but it does bring a tear to my eye because... Obviously, I can't, I can't watch it with her anymore, and um, it saddens me. So, um, I kind of have a very tentative uh, relationship with the film Frozen. Um, I'm getting better. I have been able to watch the whole film through without crying um, once or twice recently, um, but I can feel the lump in my throat um, even as I'm talking now. So, I will quickly move on. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to be reading this in December. It's my way of being a little closer to my daughter during the Christmas period. So yeah, so sorry to bring <laughs> sorry to bring the mood down a little bit. Um, moving on, um, number eleven, underneath the tree. Uh, so this is a book that has been gifted to you, or you've gifted to yourself, and I'm going to say. Um, that this book was gifted to me um, by the lovely Karen from um, one of my subscribers and she sent me Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron and I am so excited to read this book. Um, I was really intrigued by the uh, synopsis of this book but I hesitated in purchasing a copy because I did not like the front cover of the UK version. I much preferred the US edition and so when Karen got in touch with me and said hey Nicola I know that uh, you're interested in this book I finished reading it and I don't want to keep it in my collection uh, would you like me to send it to you I was like are you kidding me yes please and she said I'm really sorry it's not the UK version it's the US edition and I was like you have no idea how much I want this copy of this book. She is stunning. Just sat there on her throne owning it. Like, that is a superpower right there. That confidence in her face. Um, I just love it. And it says at the top, magic comes at a price. Um, and it says, I once laughed at stories about demons. Now I know that one may walk in my shadow. I'm looking forward to this one. Sounds really interesting. So thank you very much, Karen, for sending me the US edition, because it's stunning, um, of Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron. So thank you. And the last prompt is, I want to wish you a Merry Bookmas. And that is to read the group book, which is The Deceivers by Kristen Simmons. And I believe that uh, Completely Melanie is going to be doing a live 
chat with the author, uh, Kristen Simmons, for that book sometime in December. Um, as I say, I will leave the link to her announcement video in the description box down below. So um, she does mention the details for that live show with Kristen Simmons in that video. So if you want to check that out, please, please do. Um, she's also a really great booktuber. I love watching her videos. Um, but if you can't read the group book and I don't have a copy, uh, you can also do a buddy read with someone. Now, normally I buddy read with Charlotte. Um, we've done a lot of buddy reads over the years um, and we are still in the middle of buddy reading the Folk of the Air series. So I hopefully will be picking up uh, the Queen of Nothing in December. Um, but I wanted to mention another buddy read that I am doing in December. I am reading A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens with my husband. So it's quite a thick book, um, but uh, there's only 237 pages in here. But this is a very special copy. Um, I did not realise this when I bought it. Um, I kind of bought it and I thought, huh, that feels quite heavy. And the pages are quite yellow. And the font is quite large and, you know, the papers are quite thick. I wonder why. This book is has been designed to be inclusive for more readers and their needs. So it's basically a book that has been printed specifically for people with dyslexia um, and other reading difficulties that they may have. So the book is printed in two colours, black for the text and a pale yellow for the page background. This reduces the contrast between text and paper to help relieve the effects of visual stress. For readers who perceive blur or movement on the page, this may help keep the text still and clear. The paper stock used in the book is deliberately heavy in order to hide the ghost of the words on the other side of the page. This can help readers who struggle to perceive words clearly. The book uses a typeface that has been specifically designed to be easier to read. Each letter has a unique shape that is not true of all typefaces where many letters are mirrors of other letters or certain letter combinations mimic other single letters. The book also uses a generous point size and spacing to help more readers see the text more clearly. And you can find out more at www.barringtonstoke.co.uk. Here's to more people reading more. So I will um, put a link to that website down below so that if you know someone in your family who has difficulty in reading, but you want them to pick up books a little bit more, then uh, this might be a great way for them to do that. So my husband doesn't have dyslexia. He's not diagnosed with any uh, form of dyslexia at all. But when I've shown him some of my books, he's like, whoa, no, too many words on the page. I can't, I can't decipher that. It's, it's, it, he says it goes all blurry on him. So um, he, he can read and he reads really well. Um, but I've been trying to convince him, uh, like I encourage him by picking up um, graphic novels for him, which I know he enjoys. Um, but we are going to attempt to read A Christmas Carol together um, for Christmas. So I'm going to mark out a um, certain number of pages per day for us to read. Um, he can read out loud to me and I will read out loud to him. And then hopefully by Christmas Eve, we will have this finished, snuggled up on the couch and we can watch a Christmas movie in our Christmas pyjamas. Um, and yeah, have a, really, have a really nice Christmas. So yeah, I am buddy reading A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens with my husband this December. And I am so excited for it. I can't tell you. So yeah, really, really looking forward to this one. So those are all of the prompts and I did mention that there was a bonus prompt and if you have stuck around till the end to figure out what it is, then it is this. Good King Wenceslas. Gift someone 
a book. So, I haven't put it in the title anywhere, so we're not going to get any giveaway hunters coming in and taking away a prize for you, my regular viewers. No one else is going to know that there is a giveaway in this video, except you, my trusted and loved and oh, just so much appreciated subscribers who have stuck with me all year, laughed at me about my Makeup Mondays not actually being put up on a Monday. You know who you are. And um, for the subscribers who regularly sit down with my bookish videos with a pen and paper in their hand looking for new, for new books to put on their TBR, you know who you are. Um, this is for you. This is for those of you who watch my long ass videos and laugh with me and joke with me. This is for you. So without mentioning anything in your comment about it being a giveaway, because let's keep it just between me and you, um, I would like you to put a comment in this video um, of which book you are looking forward to the most on your Christmas TBR. So, um, I know quite a few of you do TBR videos like I do. Uh, some of you just pick out books um, and tell yourself that you're going to read them for that month. There may be some of you who don't actually make a TBR and just read as the mood takes you, but just just comment about a book that you really want to read in the month of December and tell me why. Um, why are you looking forward to it? If you are watching this and you're not actually planning to read anything in December or you're just too shy to leave a comment, then I would like you to leave a mermaid emoji and a book emoji in the comment section down below and I will know that that then is your way of saying yes please enter me into the giveaway. This giveaway is going to run throughout the whole of December and you can get more entries into the giveaway by every comment that you leave on my videos between now and the end of December. At the end of December I will close the giveaway and I will count up all the comments and I will then be drawing a name out of a cup and um, I will send you a book of your choice. So if you're in the UK, then I can uh, post it to you directly. But if you're outside of the UK, as some of you are, um, then it will probably have to go through book depository. So just let me know um, what book you would like and we'll have to order it through Book Depository. We'll have to figure out a way to do it. Um, so yes, it is open internationally. So from whichever country you are, if you are outside of the UK, please make sure that Book Depository will send to you. Um, and if you are inside the UK, then it could be from Waterstones, it could be from your local bookshop, it could be anything. So yeah, um, so that is that. So, um, there is one more book that I am going to be reading in December. One moment. And I did want to mention this book um, because I find it, I think it's a very, very special book. Um, and again, I'm going to be reading it with my husband, but it shouldn't take up too much of our time because it is just a small graphic novel picture book. And it is this one. So this is The Christmas Truce by Carol Ann Duffy and illustrated by David Roberts. And it is the story of the soldiers who on Christmas Day stopped fighting in the war in, uh, I believe it was 19, uh, the Second World War. And they stopped fighting, they shared gifts, they shook hands and they played a game of football. The Germans against the English and um, yeah for Christmas Day me and my husband will be reading through this um, it's got some absolutely stunning artwork inside 
and um, yeah so yeah I just wanted to mention this book because I saw this and I just couldn't resist it I just knew I had to pick this up and I will probably be reading this every Christmas um, from now on because I just think it's going to be absolutely beautiful so that is it that is my December TBR um, things are going to get shaken up for 2021 but you will hear more about that in a video coming up later in December um, so do keep your eye out for that and if you want to make sure that you do catch that video then please like comment and subscribe to my channel hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when that next video goes up and I will see you in the next one bye